so last time we have seen that this is the hybrid model which we are going to learn in which we have application layer transport layer internet layer or network layer then data link layer and physical layer who provides data to the network layer everyone please be attentive i might ask questions in between you should be responding that so when you are learning in the online mode i'll not know what you are doing so it is your own responsibility to pay attention and try to learn the subject had you been here i can at least look at your faces and decide whether you have understood so again i repeat the question who provides data to the network layer no physical layer is not the correct answer yes harsh that will be a more precise answer transport layer at the transmitter and data link layer at the receiver akash that is known as data link layer okay data link layer at the receiver that is true data flows downward at the transmitter and upward at the receiver who provides services to the network layer at the transmitter data link layer and who provides services to the network layer at the receiver data link layer that is same services are always provided by lower layer to the upper layer however data flow will be different who provides data to the transport layer application layer at the transmitter would you like to add something network layer at the receiver now we are going to function with the hybrid model only hybrid model so we are not going to refer to the osi reference model in here all the protocols at layer 5 are same at layer 2 they understand the same protocol the same functionalities are offered by all layer 3s here application wants to send data to the application but the real flow will be like this layer 5 provides to 4 3 2 1 1 then through the communication channel it will be given to layer 1 of this 2 3 4 and 5 and so on And then we have also learned this that here at the application layer message will be there which will be given to the transport layer header might be added which might be given to the network layer header will be added again at the data link layer header and tailor are added at the physical layer nothing is added it is simply converted to bits and then data is sent here whichever header and tailor were uh, appended at the transmitter receiver will be removing them and rest of the message will be passed on to the network layer network layer will be removing the header which was added by the counter network layer rest of the message will be passed on to the upper layer transport layer will be removing header 4 which was added by the transport layer and only message will be given to the upper layer do you remember this okay so now actually you can notice that here it is m here data is different here something else is added is a different it is different here data unit at each layer is known differently data unit at the application layer is known as a message data at the transport layer is known as a segment at the network layer it is called a packet at the data link layer they are known as frames 
n at the physical layer which has recognized bits there is no name at the physical layer uh, please note down as and when whatever you find necessary so can i ask what it is known at the application layer message at the transport layer segment at the network layer packets at the data link layer friends and at the physical layer we have bits we don't recognize a chunk of data at the physical layer they are simply called bits now we have seen that there are some design issues and we have identified them to be this that we want error control flow control congestion control routing addressing scalability quality of service security and resource allocation based on the need these are some of the design issues now one of them is addressing that we need to address each device uniquely each system each host each computer which is there we have to recognize them separately uniquely are you aware of any address in the networking ip address yes ip address now uh, do you know at which layer ip address is used network layer that is true ip address is an entity of the network layer are you aware of any other address mac address yes we also have mac address like when you purchase a computer at that time you also have purchased nic nic is network interface card now nic is not required if you are not going to connect your computer on the network ever in any type of network if you are not going to be connected if you are forever going to be a stand alone system then nic is not required but we know that we cannot guarantee that no system will be connected on the internet or rather we want them to be connected on the internet or internal network or one or the other network that means you will purchase nic network interface card with that you will be having one address with each nic there will be one unique address which is known as mac address it is also called physical address because it comes with a physical device nic it is also known as physical address or it is also called as hardware address so hardware address or physical address or mac address that is at the data link layer it is recognized and processed at the data link layer and that is also unique universally if your system is having one mac address that mac address will not be present on any other computer or laptop or system there are something called i mac spoofing and etc but that we are not talking about we are talking about legal legitimate um concepts so now at the data link layer we have mac address at the network layer we have ip address ip address is also known as a logical address which you need to configure it doesn't come with any hardware or it is not permanent so it is known as a logical address or ip address is ip address unique universally like if there is one ip address of your computer will any other computer be having the same ip address no if you are connected on the internet then your ip address will be unique that may happen that you have one network isolated and another network isolated then if you are repeating ip addresses there then it is okay but when we are talking about the internet where anyone might be connected to anyone else then ip address is going to be unique that means if you want to be on the internet then ip address will be unique so now the question which i want to raise here is ip address is unique universally mac address is also unique universally then why do we require two addresses 
एंड नोट आई हैव जस्ट वन एड्रेस लेट अस से इधर ओनली आईपी एड्रेस और जस्ट ओनली मैक एड्रेस एंड ट्रांसफर द डेटा व्हाट इज पर्पस ऑफ एड्रेसिंग सो दैट यूनिकली आई कैन से दैट आई ए वांट्स टू सेंड डेटा टू बी एज लॉन्ग एज देयर आर नो एज एंड नो बीज देन वी कैन डू इट ओके इफ आईपी कैन बी चेंज देन लेट अस गो फॉर ओनली मैक एड्रेस देन कैन वी रिमूव आईपी एड्रेस सो करंटली आई एम asking you two questions one do we need ip address if we have mac address two do we need mac address if we have ip address these are the two questions which i want to ask you and you may unmute yourself and answer it if you like if you are not very confident about this And then you can surf the internet afterwards and answer me in the next class. Okay. So currently we are leaving these questions, and I expect you to search about them and try to find the convincing logical answers that why are we having both the addresses? Can we do away with one? Can I have just one of them? I hope is the question clear. okay everyone so is the question clear then please search accordingly think over that discuss among yourselves and in the next class we will talk about it now it the data link layer it provides services to the network layer then it does framing error control and flow control generally we will discuss in the next class okay so that others also get a chance to think over that so now data link layer is divided into two parts data link layer and mac sub layer we'll be separating them based on the functionalities whenever we say there is a transmitter and there is a receiver and there is a dedicated link point to point link between transmitter and receiver like here is a transmitter and then it is connected to the receiver this is one computer and this is the other computer at that time whatever are the issues which needs to be handled here that we will do in the data link layer if we are talking about situation where this is a bus topology so here there is a common bus like if this transmitter is sending data and at the same time th if this is sending the data then on the channel two data can not travel simultaneously so there will be collision so here we have to say that which should be sending data first we will decide that who gets access over the channel not only that by chance if both of them send together then data will be collided then how to overcome problems which are caused by collision so whenever there is shared channel then we have to deal with other issues so apart from the protocols and rules regulations between transmitter and receiver which we are going to address in the data link layer we also have to talk about whenever multiple stations are transmitting those issues we will talk in the mac sub layer which is part of the data link layer only but we have divided into two parts for the clear separation and logical uh, understanding can you tell me what is full form of mac when i say mac sub layer that yes that is media access control that means media is common who will get the access how to control that that will be done there so sometimes when you try to look at the functionalities of data link layer it might be written that framing error control flow control and access control because mac sub layer is part of the data link layer only here i am talking about the data link layer which is for point to point link at that time i am just talking about error control flow control and framing but if access control is written here don't be surprised that is also fine because we have to deal with those issues also are we on the same page so far so we know the distinction between mac sub layer issues and data link layer issues
okay so now we are talking about framing error control and flow control we have also discussed that mac address is an entity of the data link layer an ip address is an entity of the internet layer or network layer okay here it is link layer or data link layer you can assume so now this computer wants to send data to this computer for that here user is sending data to the application application layer sends data to the transport layer transport layer constructs a, a segment and then it's give to the internet or network layer at the network layer packet is constructed and then it is given to the data link layer it generates a frame and then it is given to the physical layer here just four layers are there it is tcp ip protocol so but assume that in our setup we will also have a physical layer here then physical layer gives bits to the channel it will be generating voltage level according to what the medium understands and then it will be given now the example which we have seen earlier transmitter and receiver were directly connected but now that is not a realistic scenario most of the time they will be connected through intermediate nodes so here there is a transmitter here this is intermediate node 1 known as a router 1 this is router 2 and here is the destination or your receiver so this physical layer which it has sent data over the channel router is reading at the physical layer bits it is sensing if it is plus 5 voltage it will note down 1 if it is minus 5 voltage it is noting down 0 then physical layer is giving to the data link layer data link layer will give to the network layer so at the network layer it will check the ip address that let us say this is ip1 ip2 ip3 and ip4 so here when the packet was generated it was written that source ip address is ip1 and destination ip address is ip4 so here this network layer will check that my ip address is ip2 and this packet is meant for ip4 then should it send to the transport layer a router one or you may call it a router a router one network layer once it knows that this packet is meant for ip4 and my ip address is ip2 should it be sending to the transport layer no it shouldn't send that it should push it towards the destination so what it will do the network layer will give that back to the data link layer again data link layer will generate a frame it will append header and tailor and it will be given to the physical layer through physical channel router 2 is getting at the physical layer it is giving to the data link layer whichever header and tailor was appended by the data link layer will be removed here and rest of the part which is packet packet will be given to the internet layer or the network layer now when packet is received here again here ip checking will be done that here it is meant for ip4 and i am i'm ip3 so that means this message is not for me so network layer will again give that to the data link layer who will append a header and a tailor and then it will be given to the physical layer physical channel it will be received by the physical layer physical layer will be detecting and giving bits to the data link layer data link layer will remove the header and tailor and packet will be passed to the internet layer or network layer network layer will check ip address ip address of this computer is ip4 and this packet is also meant for ip4 that means it has matched so should we give it to the transport layer yes so here header will be removed and rest of the part which is a segment that will be given to the transport layer now from the transport layer it will be given to the application and so on so here this is how the data flows now let us take a different scenario let us say we have source then router 1, router 2 and router 3 and then destination. Source, 3 routers and the destination. For data transfer, how many application layer will be active? Yes, 2 application layers will be active. How many transport layer processes will be active for this scenario? Two transport layer processes will be active that is true how many network layer processes will be active huh 
how many network layer processes will be active four source three routers and a destination why four harsh and keval why four how is it passing through four internet layer can you tell me that you may admit yourself it is too if it is too lengthy to type Hello, ma yes ma'am uh, first we are sending uh, from source then it is a it is a pass to the internet layer now when we check for the second then it uh, it goes to the internet layer and then it is checking the correct ip address is there so we can say that it is active for that process how many routers do we have mm. routers yes uh, ma'am one no what did i say what is the topology when you said that it is passing through four what is the topology which i said mm, i don't know ma'am sorry okay that's okay source three routers and then destination we have source router 1 router 2 router 3 and then destination Kevin, can you tell me now how many network layers will be active? Two, ma'am. Why two? Because we have we have source and destination. Source, router one, router two, router three, and then destination. And destination, okay. Then I think, ma'am, five. Okay. So if we have three routers. then we can say five will be there like here we have two routers so here one network layer another network layer on the router one third network layer on router two fourth network layer on router three and then at the destination we have a network layer now here there can be another interpretation as well here there is one process which is receiving the data at the network layer of the transmitter we have receiving module right and it is giving to the network layer or data link layer at the receiver we are receiving and then we are transmitting through to the transport layer so here only one process is done it is receiving and here it is transmitting while here this data link uh, this network layer is receiving and it is also transferring so it is one part at the receiver and one at the transmitter so if we assume that there is one process for transmitter and one process for the receiver at the network layer then in the topology of three routers can you tell me how many network layer processes will be there yes then it will be eight because one at the transmitter one at the receiver and two at every intermediate node so 6 plus 2 it will be 8 so in some literature you will be finding 8 in some literature you will be finding 5 if you assume that there is one process which is capable of sending and receiving then it will be one process if you think there are separate processes then accordingly you will have to count so depending on the literature if you find that 8 or 5 please don't be confused interpret it like this anyway if nothing is mentioned then we will assume that one process is taking care of the receiver reception and transmission both of that one will be taking care of that so now are we ready for another example so let us say there is one transmitter eight routers in between and then receiver that is our topology Okay. Then how many application layer processes will be active? Good. How many transport layer processes will be active? True. Nice. How many network layer processes will be active? Yes, ten. and how many data link layer processes will be active 10 that is true 
certain data link layer processes also will be active but if you assume that it requires separate process to receive and transmit data then how many data link layer processes 18 nice so i hope all of you have got it that how the data flows and how it works and at the physical layer we don't have actually processes at the physical layer we just recognize bits we don't say because we are not actually processing the data we are just converting your bits into voltage levels so this is how the data flows if this is clear then i would like to go to the next part so you know that at the routers when i know that it is never going to transmit or receive data if it is going to function just as a router then do we require implementation of transport layer and application layer here router means someone who routes the packet which is intermediate device if it is never going to receive the data and if it is never going to transmit the data then do we require implementation of transport layer and application layer there no then we don't require but in the real life you might not be so sure sometime you might be acting as the router and sometimes you might be receiving the data or sometime you might be transferring the data in that scenario all of them will be required however if you are meant to configure a pure router then router will be implemented just until the network layer it will be having network layer data link layer and physical layer that is sufficient so now here if you saw here properly then data link layer is here so i'll be adding a header and tailor here and that will be removed here what will be the part of the header can anyone guess at the data link layer what might be part of the header no bhavik ip address is an entity of which layer yes network layer ip address is an entity of the network layer so here in the header of internet layer we will be having ip address in the header of link layer we will have mac address in the header we have mac address and then uh, in the tailor you can have parity bit or something like that okay. it is added here and when it is received here then header and tailor will be removed it will be checking that is it my mac address yes it will be removing that and just packet will be transferred here in the packet it will be knowing the ip address it will match here it was written that it is source ip address is ip1 and destination ip address is ip4 while ip address of this machine is ip2 so it will be sending that back here now when link layer gets this data it is fresh data for link layer to send it doesn't know that it is getting from the application layer and I'm getting it or it is something which I had received just before a while and I had forwarded to the network layer. It will not know. For link layer, it is a separate data to be sent. Link layer will add a header, tailor, it will send the data and here it will be received. Again, header and tailor will be removed and then it will be given to the upper layer network layer will process the packet it will see the ip matching and it is not done so it will again due to the data link layer this data link layer will construct a frame to construct a frame means to add header and tailor it will be passed on here again header and tailor will be removed from the frame packet is converted and then packet is given here ip address matched so ip header will be removed and then it will be given to the transport layer is this process clear so now can you tell me that currently i'm having source router one router two and destination which is the lowest layer at which you realize that this is the destination at which layer do you realize that this is the correct receiver yes internet layer 
or network layer. At the network layer, we realize that this is the receiver. So we can say that network layer is taking you from source to the receiver. Network layer is taking you from source to the receiver. It is also known as host to host configuration. It provides you host to host delivery or you can say it is provides you source to destination delivery. Similarly, so scope of the network layer is from source to the destination or let us say host to host. All the transmitters and our receivers are known as hosts and the intermediate routers are known as intermediate nodes. These are known as nodes. Each one of them is a node. In the similar fashion, can you think and tell me what is scope of the data link layer? Data link layer functions between what? Like I can say, source to the destination, my network layer is functioning. It is attempting delivery there. What about data link layer? Can you tell me the scope of the data link layer? Yes, between the nodes or between the devices. So it is known as node to node delivery or it is known as hop to hop delivery. Means just a small jump from here to here. That's it. And then data link layer is over because now we are giving to the network layer and when we are getting here, we are constructing a fresh frame. So, we don't say between routers because here it is between source and router. Here it is between router and router. And here it is between router and destination. But all of them are hopes like here to here. One jump, that is scope of the data link layer. Then that's it. Then this data link layer takes from here to here. Then it forgets about it. This one takes from this node to this node. And then it forgets about it. Is it okay? So now the question is, if we are getting data through internet layer at the correct computer, is it sufficient or we need to deliver data to a more specific location? Like let us say I have given data to the computer. So is our task over or something else is left to be done? Uh, that is true. Let us say the data is not encoded. What I want to ask you is let us say currently you are having one window for the uh, Google Meet. And then you might have another window for Google. You might have third window for the Google. In the Google one window you are uh, finding out what is IP address. In the other window you are finding out what is MAC address. So now when you are sending the query what is IP address that response is coming in the window of what is IP address only and it never goes to the window of what is MAC address. That means if it reaches your computer that is not sufficient. It needs to reach to the specific application. It needs to be received by the application just to reach the, the destination or host is not sufficient. We need to deliver data to the specific application because generally in all the real-time systems there will be multiple applications. If you are sure that there is just one application on one computer then IP address is sufficient but that is not the case. We are well aware of that. So after talking about the IP address, after delivering data at the host, we need to say that here there are seven applications to which application data should be sent for that another address is required and that is known as port address. Port address is an entity of the transport layer. At the transport layer, we have port address. So if you have seven applications, then seven different port addresses will be there. And transport layer based on the port address will be giving data to the appropriate application. And port address is unique on the computer. On this computer, you cannot have two applications with the same port address. Otherwise, there will be confusion. However, 
on this computer you can have 220 port address and here also you can have 220 that is okay but here two applications cannot have the same port address if you 100 applications then 100 applications will have 100 unique port addresses port address is unique on the computer here you can have 7000 then another application on the same computer cannot have 7000 on the other computer 7000 might be used is it clear can i say using ip address I can give data correctly to the application. If I use IP address, I can correctly deliver data to the specific application. Can we say that? Everyone, come on, this is fairly easy. No, we cannot say it. Then can I say, if I specify the port address, I can deliver data correctly to the application. Can I say that? If I use the port address, I can correctly deliver data to the application. Can I say that? No. Like let us say, here there are two. Here there is one host and here there is another host. So if I am sending data, that if I write down that port address is 8000, then will it be sufficient to send the data? No. Because 8000 is running on two computers. That means IP address and port address, as you have rightly pointed out, both the combination will be required to correctly identify the application, which is known as the socket address. Okay. IP combination of IP address and port address is known as socket address. It will be sufficient and required to uniquely identify each application in the world so if you have IP address then IP address will be telling you that which computer we are talking about on the top of that we have port address so we will be knowing which application we are talking about one of them is not sufficient we need IP plus port combination or socket address to uniquely identify application so now I can can you tell me what will be the scope of the transport layer Like your data link layer takes you from just here to here. That's it. Just from here to here. That's it. Your network layer takes you from here to here. And now your transport layer is taking you actually from application to application. So no, not transport to transport. Something else. Then I can say network to network. Yes, between applications. So can you think of a better word? It is known as end-to-end -end delivery because your endpoint is the application or it is also known as process to process delivery. So your transport layer is the one which takes you to the actual end because we know that just reaching the host is not sufficient. We need to find out the application. So at the transport layer, we have port address. At the network layer, we have IP address. At the data link layer, we have MAC address. We have a message, segment, packet, frames, and bits at the appropriate layers. And this is how the data flows at the routers. It will be checking that this is not the destination and it will be sending to the next one and so on. Whenever IP is matched, then it only it will be given to the transport layer. And then transport layer will check that to which application data should be sent. And then it will be giving data to the application. Are we good so far? Okay, fine. So still, uh, you are supposed to give me answer of why do we require IP address and port address in the next class. So all of you, please get, uh, get the answer, try to understand that and then we will discuss. And I think you should be able to answer that more clearly now once we know the flow. Anyway, so now, this is what we had just talked about here there will be a message then here segment will be created then packet will be created here then frame will be created like here MAC address will be appended and at the end something like parity bit or frame check sequence is the frame proper that will be done it will be converted in the bits and then it will be received at the receiver 
So actually, data link layer receives packets. It converts frames. And data link layer wants to send frame to the other data link layer. However, to do that, it sends that to the physical layer. Physical layer converts into voltages, gives to the channel. And then they are detected at the physical layer. Will give to the data link layer. It receives frames. From the frame, it will be making a packet and it will be giving here. So this is scope of the data link layer. This data link layer and this data link layer, they send frames to each other. And they convert from packets to frame at the transmitter and from frames to packet at the receiver. And they use services of the physical layer. They provide services to the network layer. Now, here, uh, this we already discussed that between two adjacent nodes in the subnet, we will subnet in subnetwork in the sub part of the network. In the part of the network, our data link layer is communicating just between two adjacent nodes, two neighbor nodes. That is where our data link layer functions. And whatever bits we are sending, they'll be received in order. Like let us say, if I'm sending 0, 1, 0, 0, then the server will be detecting 0, 1, 0, 0 only. 0, 1, 0, 0. If the voltage level increases here, then it might receive 0, 1, 1, 0. If the voltage level drops, then it might receive 0, 0, 0, 0. But it will never happen that this 1 will overtake this. It will receive first and then this 0, 0, 0 will come. Data will never be out of order. Because whatever voltage level, first you will be having voltage level for 0, then you will be having voltage level for 1, then 0 and 1. So in other terms, if I'm sending first frame 1, then frame 2, and then frame 3, then the server will be getting first frame 1, then frame 2, and then frame 3. It will not happen that frame 2 will be overtaking frame 1, and then frame 2 will reach first, and then frame 1, and then frame 3. Yes? To understand this in the data link layer because they are immediately connected whatever goes first will be received first however at the transport layer let us say at the transport layer i'm sending three segments segment one let us say we are sending two segments segment one and segment two then will transport layer always receive first segment first and then second segment or in some circumstances, segment 2 may receive first before segment 1. Is it possible that at the transport layer you are sending segment 1 and then you are sending segment 2? So, will they always be received in order? See, I am not talking about whether they are received correctly. There is a difference between received correctly and received in order. Correctly means the data will be received as it is. Data might change. I am not talking about that. I am talking about the sequence. Like if you are sending first and then second segments from the transport layer, then will transport layer receive first segment first and then second segment only? Or sometimes the order might be different. Is the question clear? Okay, everyone, what do you think? Will it get in sequence or that might be out of sequence? We have settled that at the data link layer, they will be in sequence only. What Because they are connected through direct link, whatever you send here, it will be received here first. Whatever you send next will be received here next. Like in the pipeline, if you are sending one by one something, then in the sequence only it will be received. So at the data link layer, they will be received in sequence. However, at the transport layer, that might be delivered out of sequence. Can anyone think of the reason? That why at the transport layer, you may first have segment 2 and then you may get segment 1. Why out of order delivery may take place at the transport layer? Yes. 
yes because of routers that is true because when we are talking about data link layer they are directly connected while at the network layer transport layer is dependent on the network layer so here it is like this like source then router 1 router 2 and destination now if this router 1 is also connected to the destination okay here there is a source then router 1 is connected to router 2 and destination and router 1 is also connected to destination there will be multiple paths available to the destination so if this router is sending let us say first packet over here and then this router is down due to some reason then it might be using another path which is shorter if another available path is shorter then router 2 or oh, sorry segment 2 might be delivered first and then segment might uh, segment 1 might be reached because at the routers we take the decision about which path is to be chosen so most of the time best path would be chosen for all the segments and there will be no issues however in some cases different path might be chosen for the different packets if a better path is available at some point of time then next packets will be sent on a different path and if there is a better path they might be making way to the receiver sooner than the earlier packets so at the transport layer data delivery might be out of order however that issue we don't need to deal at the data link layer are we on the same page i'm getting responses only from a handful of you there are 45 here but i'm getting responses from only 5 7 so others I understand that it is difficult to move your hands after lunch, but please take that pain and try to be agile and active. Okay, fine. So, if everything is fine so far, then we are ready to start framing. Okay. So, what is framing? That is one of the major responsibilities of the data link layer. When Data link layer receives data from the upper layer. It divides data into smaller part. And that process is known as framing. It divides data into smaller chunks, which is known as framing. Now, why does it divide? So, one of the reasons could be hardware limitation. Like if you are talking about Ethernet. Then if Ethernet is used as the underlying hardware technology, then you will study, Madam will teach you that in the ethernet maximum data which you can send in one data packet one data frame rather in one frame you can never send more than 1500 bytes maximum you can send 1500 bytes in one frame so if your data or network layer is giving you 2000 bytes in the packet then our ethernet cannot carry 2000 bytes so what it will be doing your data link layer will be constructing two frames one of the 1500 bytes another of the 500 bytes or it may create two frames one of the 1000 bytes and one of another 1000 bytes so it might need to divide data into smaller parts because of hardware limitation which is known as framing now even if there is no hardware limitation let us say our hardware supposed uh, supports one frame of 5 gb and our bandwidth also supports that that 5 gb frame can be sent at a time but still i am not sure whether it will be a smart decision to send uh, 5 gb in one frame can you tell me why that is okay see okay well uh, in case of 5 gb you will be sending one by one bit only okay it is always going to be serial transmission so what i'm saying is instead of sending 5 gb you should be sending let us say 5000 frames of smaller parts something like that so the channel is going to get the same amount of data but should we be sending as one frame or should we be sending in smaller parts that is the issue right now why smaller parts what is wrong if i send one frame of 5 gb what can go wrong yes yes please unmute 
ma'am if we transfer the 5 gb frame at once then let's say if uh, there is a, a break in between then we once again when we restart then we once again have to transfer this 5 gb but if we use the smaller part then let's say there is a 20 frame and then 10 frame is passed then then break happen then we just have to send the remaining 10 frames exactly well then so let us say if you are sending 5 gb at a time and then there is something wrong then when we restore our network again we will have to send 5 gb rather than that if we had sent in the smaller parts then whatever part was problematic only that part needs to be resend and let us say if there is no break let us our network is robust there is no break but still on our network our bits can always change there might be some errors so if i am sending 5 gb that means there is one header and one tailor for 5 gb in our error calculation is done on that our parity bit is generated based on that now if one of the bit is changed in this 5 gb if one bit is changed then entire frame you will need to send again so that will be time consuming and resources are also wasted now again when you are retransmitting in 5 gb another bit might be change this point of time so again you will have to send that so this is not efficient rather than that if you had sent smaller parts then let us say if two frames from number 11 and from number 23 if those are problematic then only those two frames can be sent and others can be kept at the receiver so this will be more efficient so framing is done not just because of hardware limitation prime reason is hardware limitation but even if you didn't have any hardware limitation we would prefer to send into smaller parts rather than sending one large part i hope all of you would agree to that yes other device will have to wait for the calculation but then again you know bhavik uh, there are pros and cons of that if i say that i want to send just 100 bits in one frame then in each frame there is a trans header and tailor in our aim is to transfer the data and never the header and tailor because those are the extra bits so if you have unrealistically small frame size then also efficiency will be compromised because your transmitter will be busy calculating the checksum receiver will be busy calculating the checksum verifying the checksum and then extra bits like mac address will be there in each of the frames so it is very important that we find a fine balance to make the frames it should not be too large it should not be too small yes okay so now let us say when we say frames that we we decided that framing should be done that we should divide our data into smaller parts now let us also focus on that how we can discriminate between frames so one method is we can construct frames based on number of characters so here we are counting that there are total 5 characters in the frame then first character should be the character count that how many characters are there so if there are four data bytes then one will be the character count you are writing five in the initially whatever comes next that again will be the count five that means 1 2 3 4 and 5 there are five characters then it is eight that means in third frame we have eight characters 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and then again eight and so on so here we don't need our uh, frames to be of the same size because sometimes your network layer might be sending you larger data sometimes your network might be sending you smaller data so it is desirable that frames can be of the different size so how we are differentiating between frame that we are writing this five so receiver will count up to five and it knows that okay this is one frame it can process the frame then the next frame starts from here the frame ends here then the next frame starts from here and it ends here and so on so here if this 7 is changed to something else any if receiver receives that it will detect that okay this is a wrong frame then it will drop that frame and it will ask the transmitter that please send me this frame again because there was something wrong with this so only that frame you need to send again so do you think character count is a smart strategy or sometimes it might fail miserably will character count work abhi when will it fail mm -hmm. 
something else let us say when we are sending this data okay then the first row was sent and then was the character count if the character count itself changes if it changes from 5 to 7 then i will assume that now you have seven frames then whatever is the next you will assume that those many are there then based on the next you will assume that now there are two now there are four now there are seven and so on that means if at one point of time one of the character count itself changes then not only that frame is problematic but subsequently all next frames might be corrupted and our basic uh, aim of having the framing is ruined we wanted framing so that whichever part is problematic only that can be sent and others can be preserved but here if your character count changes then only that frame is not destroyed but subsequently all the frames you are losing the synchronization and starting from that frame we will have to retransmit all other frames and which is not efficient have you understood the problem if your data byte is changed then there is not an issue that particular error can be detected and it can be restored but if your character count itself changes then it does not damage only that frame but subsequently all the frames might be problematic so character count is not used have you understood the problem or limitation of character count okay fine so the next one is this Okay. Whatever byte stuffing is the next technique. From the network layer, we are getting payload. We are adding a header and we are adding a tailor. So we are going to construct a frame now. So what is recommended is that insert one flag byte here and insert one flag byte at the end. Flag means you are not going to write F L H E. We are deciding on one byte. With the same byte, you will be using for the starting of the frame and ending of the frame. like let us say we are using our hash sign so hash will be used here then header then data tailor trailer and then the hash sign that is what you will be doing so now if some data changes then our trailer will fail our crc will be failing and then you can remove that if our flag byte changes like in the earlier example we said that count can change so similarly here our hash sign if that changes to something else then then this frame will be problematic but what all we have to look for we have to look for two consecutive hash signs because we know that one ends so it will be hash and when the next one start another there will be a flag bytes so whenever there are two flag byte in sequence we know that one is for the end and one is for the start so now you restored the synchronization whichever frame is problematic only that frame we need to retransmit and the problem does not propagate unlike the previous case so this is better than character count would you agree to that because here flag byte is used for ending the data and starting the data so whenever you have two flags together you know that one is for the end and one is for the start so even if one of the flag was corrupted then after ending of that the next one will be coming and we will be able to regain the synchronization so here it is not so that once we are losing the track then we are losing forever only one or maximum two frames you will have to retransmit rest of the frames if they are correct you will be able to restore them so that problem is resolved here but there might be something else Can you think of what another problem can be caused here? So we said that flag byte will be decided for starting and ending. That will be just one byte. What if flag is part of the data? Like in your data, if I have hash, I'm transferring my C program, so I have hash in the data itself. then whenever your receiver is getting hash it will assume that this is end of the frame and then it will be interpreting the frame incorrectly so whenever the flag byte if that happens to be part of your data then your receiver receiver will be misguided 
then the receiver will be misguided and it will wrongly interpret end of the frame it will discard that it will ask transmitter to send transmitter will again send the same thing again receiver will not be able to judge where the frame ends and we will be in trouble have you understood the problem then what can be solution to that is like here if there is a flag byte then we are deciding that one escape should be inserted before that like another byte escape we have decided escape is zero that is what we have decided so whenever flag is part of the data then it should always be inserted here flag escape byte or zero so zero and a uh, hash so whenever receiver is getting hash followed by zero it knows that here we are talking about the data byte so it will remove zero and hash will be kept now what if escape and flag is part of the data your data might be this a escape flag and b same solution insert one escape before each escape and each flags that means you will be sending a flag uh, a escape 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 flag and b whenever receiver receives first escape it will always remove that first escape always will be removed by the receiver next byte will be preserved if again there is an escape it will remove that flag will be preserved and then b so, and whenever the actual flag is coming like if i'm talking about the entire frame it will be flag a escape data escape inserted escape flag b and flag so whenever receiver receives flag it knows that okay this is starting so now i'm supposed to keep the data so it will be keeping a the inserted escape will be removed this escape will be preserved inserted escape will be removed flag will be preserved b will be kept and last flag is directly coming that means it is end of the data was it part of the data then it would have been followed after the escape while it is directly coming that means it will be removed that is how it will be getting the data so whenever there is in the uh, beginning and end we are stuffing byte and whenever escape or flag are appearing in the data we are inserting one byte so it is known as a byte stuffing so we are running out of time is it clear everyone have you understood this okay fine thank you i'm ending the class and uh, we will discuss uh, the next technique in the next class